Well, hello there, Rumrums. Today I'm going to take you on a journey you didn't even know you needed to go on. For the next five minutes, or however long it takes to decipher the mess I lay out in front of you, we're going to do a recap of the family trees in our current series, or at least the many branches of the same family tree at this point. If you, fellow monkey, would like to skip over swinging through the branches of this incestuous oak, then I will put a timestamp up on screen and you can click that. Well, you can't click that because we're not allowed to do annotations anymore. You can, uh, you know press press something <laughs> but of course there is very little point in a family tree if we haven't got any families to fill it and given yesterday's world war three level event i think we're in a little bit of trouble with that our numbers have been reduced down to only 17 amaya siala captain cuba again for the for the fourth time and gammon all waiting for a burial. Siala, our oldest colonist. Amaya, our newest. Captain Cuba is just a real tragic state at this point. And Gammon, Gammon had only just joined us. But maybe, somewhere in Ohm's memory banks, maybe there's the secret to resurrect a mech serums. Maybe one day we'll actually be able to bring them back and not have their heads explode horribly in the process. And to make things worse still, Ohm has absolutely no idea. Another 3.1 days before he'll at least get out of bed. And as Amphisa is our oldest colony member, the burials will go to her. Goodbye, Gammon. I don't have anything to say about you, Gammon, because you died before you could actually do anything, but goodbye, Gammon. <laughs> Poor little baby Amaya. Goodbye. You two didn't even get to be named. You didn't live that long. And I thought the only way that we could possibly honor Siala is by burying her in the Arcadian tomb. She founded this dynasty along with Arcadius. I think she deserves to be buried there. And you find me a goddamn single person who would disagree with that. And then once again, perhaps against my better judgment, I'm going to bury Captain Cuba in the freezer. Put him on ice until we can find maybe a better way to resurrect him. Now we have the very small task of replanting all the farms, rebuilding all the buildings, cremating about 100, 200 corpses, and... uh tidying up whatever the hell's going on out here. And then maybe, just maybe, saving a goddamn dynasty. <laughs> oh, no way. Whoa! <laughs> Never mind, I'm gonna do shit. Gee, Arcadius, I'm so sorry to hear about your grandmother turned lover. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Yes, are you free? Are you free at all? Later? Or maybe forever? God damn you. She, she was just buried. She's still warm, Arcadius. Fucking hell. Avion charmed Arcadius II by describing him as a breathtaking hoof. Arcadius became aroused and agreed to become Avion's lover. <laughs> that's fucking terrible. Oh, that's not terrible, though. Look at that. Best friend, Ohm. 100-100. Both of them, they are, like, real big fans of one another. And then... Avion is his lover. Hold on. His lover and his cousin, and his cousin once removed. God damn. Oh, it gets worse when you realize his mother is also his cousin. I don't want to... We've, we've been over the family tree once. I'm all right. Do not go that way. Only madness lies there. Well, madness lies there, and cousins with other cousins, and... Grandmothers with grandsons, and... <laughs> Shit, it's just, it's just awful. What the hell? A firekeeper named Wang has joined? That's a... 10 year old with a revolver who took all her clothes off <laughs> officer i swear what the hell do i know you ah this is this is a traitor this is a trap they're gonna they're gonna turn on us i'm gonna let them into the colony i'm gonna give them incredible armor and weapons and then they're gonna betray us you know what i'm gonna trust you wang and i also have the name wang on my names list so who knows maybe this is maybe this is fate little dang lee wang oh my god 10.51 cooking. Well, that's good, seeing as one of our cooks is, um, on the live. 4.78 melee. Double passion as well. Shit, you're going to do well in the school. Okay, okay, next question. Did we get any speed skin suits from the second commando raid we had? I'm hoping we've at least got one. Okay, we've got one there. Uh, um, and only one. Really? Wow. Out of all of that, we got a single suit. Are you kidding me? I just double-checked it. I can't believe that. Oh, no. The worst part is I think I buried some of our colonists that were wearing speed skin suits. Ciala, I'm, I'm so sorry, but it is too valuable to just be buried. And I mean, they were tainted anyway, right? It's not like it's going to make any difference in the grand scheme of things. Oh, Ciala, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Ciala. 
<laughs> Let me go ahead and take these off of the recycler too, because it's just so, so huge. Even if they're only at 1%, how can we recycle them? Holy crap, more new lovers. Toy Boy Roy and Uwu. Toy Boy Roy Pepper Stasius and Uwu, the second chicken e pank Dimos. Oh my. <laughs> Their children's names are gonna be are gonna be unforgivable. I think Toy Boy Roy is just running back and forth installing bionics right now, eh? So the combat system we're using in this playthrough is Yeo's combat. And I'm pretty sure I've talked about before how important armor penetration is for Yeo's combat. But there is actually another significant mechanic that was pointed out to me. So if it's wrong, you can blame this person. The actual tier of the armor affects its efficacy as well. So for example, regular marine armor might be better than legendary flak armor. Armor stuffing aside, that is. So in this case, going for the void armor very much might be the right call. I think what I'm going to do is cancel all of the flat gear from here on out. We can still make the flat shirts to wear under the void armor because they're skin layer, whereas void is middle and outer. But given that the majority of people have the speed skin suits now, in fact, I would imagine almost everybody. Ohm and Fiza. It's in fact only 9 out of 18 people who don't have speed skin suits. And I mean, shit, we had two commando raids yesterday, so the chance of us actually being able to finish the numbers is... uh pretty significant. Then the other very high priority gear to get everybody equipped with is shield belts. Now, someone on Discord asked why I hadn't equipped anyone with shield belts yet, and the simple answer was I tested a shield belt and we were still unable to equip it, even at this stage of the game. But we do have the shield belt technology, so I looked into it. It turns out there are five different shield belts in this mod pack. There are range shield belts, regular base game shield belts, architect shield belts, Orion Corp shield belts, and then the shield packs. And if I had to guess, maybe the person on Discord was right, and I tried equipping the Orion shield belt on them, which would have been an arcane technology. So why don't we queue up a whole bunch of regular shield belts, not shield packs or range shield belts. The range shield belts, if you're curious, have a low max energy, but actually allow you to fire out. Someone pointed out if I'd have disabled fire at will, it would have stopped our colonists jetpacking after people uncontrollably. So it might be the case that to actually use the jetpacks, we might need the range shield belt. For the time being, I'll make I'll make a few regular shield belts and we'll see if we can still use the jump spines with that. And you know what? I think it's time to say goodbye to the hauling bots. They're great. They help out a huge amount. But and they also make the game run like shit. <laughs> At this point, we have the ability to not only use our IO ports for managing hauling much, much faster, but the one place they're really helping out right now is emptying out the kill box. We can build a, similar to how we did it in the Robo Daddy series, a zone puller that pulls items from a particular stockpile into an IO port automatically. That way, not only would it be faster than the hauling bots, but it also wouldn't kill the game. Die! Holy crap. We're off of void before they could throw anything else at us. Thank God for that. Thank God those people died and gave us a bit of a breather, huh? Randy Random. Savage Randy, no less. Oh my God, you can really see where we get Void, huh? Just these huge clusterfucks. I love the Void storyteller, I really do, but you can't play without a hot seat. Oh, this gives me a good idea. I mean, a bad idea for the colonists, but a good idea for us not getting completely wiped out. We could take apart all the furniture in all the bedrooms and have Dawn rebuild all the furniture in all the bedrooms. Dawn only has, well, just about to be nine construction. That means that we will stop having legendary everything in every room. 276,000 colony wealth and 142,000 of that is in buildings. Over half our colony wealth is because of our furniture. I mean, not specifically the furniture, the particle accelerators, the plasma fusion reactors, the nuclear cooling towers, they all contribute. Not as much as a fucking gold-plated legendary copper bed would, though. And we are at the stage of the game now where we have way better beds, to be completely honest. We have not only the elite beds that we can probably make far more frequently, we also have the advanced double beds from Vanilla Expanded. And actually, there's very little difference between the advanced double bed from Vanilla Expanded and the Elite Royal Bed from Mechalit. 0.05 comfort. No more decadence. Tear them down. This time, it's war. We're no longer going to be the babby tribal faction that learned to think good. We're war boys now. Not like literal war boys, but like, you know, like people of war. Although granted, they're probably gonna be pretty pissed about me tearing all the bedrooms down when 
the only person capable of rebuilding them is apparently pretty terrible. Arcadius the second created Masterwork Void Armor. 169. <laughs> Thank you, Arcadius. Of course it would be. Now, here's the real question. The real fucking make or break with this damn Void Armor. Can we paint it? Oh, you've sold me. Friendship ended with spooky purple gimps. Ohm's golden boys are my new best friend, although it does look a bit more piss yellow than golden. I'm not sure Ohm's piss boys has the same ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What? What the fuck are you doing? Oh, thanks, Toy Boy Roy. I really appreciate the help. I was about to say, if YouTube wouldn't clap me for it, I would absolutely name this episode Ohm's Piss Boys. Toy Boy Roy Pepistasius Colony Littera. Ah. You good, though? Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Thanks, Hocus and Mondo. Very cool. Any second now, we get ourselves on Ohm. He's back, and he's immediately decided to meditate in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> you got your baby smelly? Damn it, home. The people haven't got anywhere to sleep. If only some idiot hadn't taken away all of these beds. I've also told them to thicken up the walls with more antimatter going through the mountains now as well, so we don't get a repeat of what happened last time I told you no more no more messing around we're we're piss boys now i lied there are in fact eight shield belts it's just some of them you can't research unbelievable i think the one we want is just regular shield belt right what the hell is hc1 shield that might be the one the commandos use them got a ryan court defense shield void shield belt obviously the regular shield belt warborn shield belt Chaser shield belt and Arcotech shield belt, and of course the range shield belt as well. And I think because we've got so much to make, let's throw down another crafting bench back here. Hey, there we go. How tragically modern. Well, I bet it has barely done anything to the wealth. Oh no, there's a pretty big dip there. Okay, yeah, that worked. I mean, shit, I'm not trying to metagame the wealth or anything. This is just objectively better. They're way more comfy now. Have you ever been that fucking comfy? No, I didn't think so. The next big infrastructure upgrade I want to throw down is auto doors, because basically everywhere is regular, plain old, boring room or doors. In fact, 75 regular, plain old, boring room or doors. Although I'll be damned if I'm taking the saloon doors off of the cathedral. Well, a cathedral turned plasma fusion chamber. Yeah, you better stay away. Oh, it's dealing with the bodies for us. Oh, shit, I can't complain. Thanks, Randy. That right there? That's not okay. <laughs> it's just... It's just horrible. Maybe we should send Ohm into combat like that. Just a tightly fitting Lycra suit. Nothing is left to the imagination. Rock hard Ohm and the piss boys. Speaking of which, how are we... Oh! Hey, look at that. We got our helmet made as well. No on the subject of them being piss boys, I have built an actual solid block of gold that we can hopefully sample and make them look less like piss boys and more like golden warriors. Uh, it's really very little difference there, chief. Okay... Yeah, sort of. I think Arcadius' sword looks more gold than that gold wall. Ah, yeah, there we go. That looks a lot better. Oh my god, I forgot we queued up that research. Finally, we can build flesh beasts. Well, outside of them just marrying their own grandmothers. Luciferian production. Whoa, that one ties here. I mean, I love the look of these weapons. I can't imagine they're better than what we've got. But they would be kind of cool to see though, right? Don't get me wrong, the fisting has been great, but there's something about a giant glowing battle axe that I I just can't turn down. We will go for that. When it next comes up, we will absolutely go for that. I can't turn down Luciferium. I think things are coming along pretty damn nicely. The majority of our people now have void armor, almost everybody. Couple of new bedrooms going down so that everybody can live in luxury rather than sharing that horrible barracks in the hospital. Avion, lover of Arcadius, might in fact be carrying the future heir of the Dimos dynasty, and our good friend Cobalt Pepper Stasius has hearing loss. Which I suppose isn't a good thing, but it's not like you can hear me say it. Sorry, I've got to ask. What the hell's going on with Smelly? Smelly? You good? Stormcaster. Oh, wait, they're an avian? No, they're not. Uh... 
is their parent an avian? No. Father is Snowdog. Oh, Snowdog's an avian. So you're like a a avian human hybrid, but you are human. I wonder what the hell's going on with that. Oh, they do have hard worker and sanguine, though. That is a 10 out of 10 character right there. I'm not sure what's going on with your hair. That's up to you. Maybe this is some space or era fashion I don't know about. It does look like complete shit, though. <laughs> what the hell is causing them to slow down? Is it a gas pipe? Let's think about that gas pipe. I'm going to say it. Bring Void. Bring Void back. Look at this squad we've got working on gear. Ohm's cracking out the shields. Arcadius the second is cracking out the helmets. Cuddles is helping wherever the hell Cuddles can. When this next raid turns up, we are going to be so ready. Oh my god, twins? That's a hell of a way to save the dynasty. Oh no! <laughs> Put them back. Put them back right now. Nana to e chicken... Be fuck. Nana the second chicken e pank dimos. And Brett to chicken e pank dimos. I haven't decided whether I wanna I wanna go for two or the second. Because they're not the second. It's Thank you. You're blocking the door, Avion. Get out the fucking way. I had a name on my names list perfect for this tiny child. The baby formerly known as Brett is now known as Brigadier Lebowski. Which makes their full name Brigadier Lebowski the second chicken e pank dimos. And it also kind of makes sense because the Arcadians in the colony, the leader of the Arcadians, has always been afforded a special military status. In this case, they've got some golden armor and a very fancy not cursed sword. What do you like, Brigadier Lebowski? Because you got a lot of mountain lover. Ooh. Feels happy being near a large mountain. Well, I suppose you're in luck. Is that actually working? Mountain lover, hey, there we go, plus five. Oh shit, that's permanent plus five mood, eh? That was pretty good. And then also super immune. Super immune is incredible. And then we have Corrupt the Second Chicken E Pank Dimos. Hello, Corrupt the Second E Chicken E. Your parents are both your second cousin. Uh, ah, God, my head. Underground, a beautiful wimp. Fine. What a way to save the dynasty, though. Twins. Maybe we should try going for that resurrect to make serum. Bring back Captain Cuba. I'm not risking the psychic resurrection again. There's going to be nothing of the poor guy left. Ah, uh, I did say I would do it. Weapon loss recipes. I mean, I'd probably take this over everything else anyway. For a big fucking sword. I think Arcadius could do with a big fucking sword. And by Arcadius, I meant Ohm. Because I pointed at Ohm. The names. Please. Look, the names are all blurring together at this point. Isn't that right, Brigadier Lebowski, the second chicken he panked Dimos? <laughs> I love that immediately Arcadius the second is at work making void armor for his freshly born children. Freshly born? Newly born? Whatever. However you call babies. The avians are supposed to have a life expectancy of 80 and Fiza is 136. Was Amfiza one of the people that we recovered from a crypto sleep casket? I don't think so. Weird. Well, I was going to say we'll go through and we'll start upgrading all the long-lived characters first with Barnix because I'd rather not use the one like Cobalt, who's, to be honest, just one bad day off of dying at this point. Oh my god, we've already got it? Well, brilliant. Okay, so we have to make AI cores to make Luciferium. So we'll just make one AI core and then we'll make Luciferium. Well, we've already got the Luciferium for it too. That's just incredible. All this time, we could have resurrected some of our people. Now, Ohm has a very simple rule for resurrect mech serums. If they died of old age, or if they died in battle, honorably, defending this base with melee, then they don't get resurrected. Siala should be allowed to rest now. She was hundreds of years of age, and she gave her life to defend her dynasty. And what more could you ask for? And of course, there's no point resurrecting old people, because we'll resurrect them, and then they'll just kind of take two steps and die again. However, people who died long before their time and people whose entire dynasty survival is hinging on, they're fair game. And that leaves us with two very obvious people. The first, of course, being Captain Cuba, who we've tried to resurrect more times than I can count. And then there's also Stroopers. Poor precious Stroopers who died hundreds of years ago. Human years, of course. All the way back in the tribal era. It almost feels cool to resurrect her, to bring her into this world where she would have Actually, no idea what's going on. I mean, shit, I don't have any idea what's going on. There is one more we could resurrect. Someone who was taken from us in their prime. Someone who was unjustly murdered. That, my friends, 
is Arco Joris. Now, before we can start resurrecting a handful of people just because we feel like, we do have to bear in mind Captain Cuba, technically, but Struppers and Joris definitely, uh, they're all rotten. And you can't resurrect a rotten person, as we found out many, many times with poor Captain Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> so we will first have to make DNA reconstructor mech serums. Those don't resurrect a person, but they restore the body to the point of death. Let's put those finishing touches on the kill box I talked about earlier. So we should be able to do this with an IO port, but I'll put down two just because if one of them breaks, it could be the difference between our people dying and not. Then we want an item puller. And we're going to pull items out of the stockpile into the IO port. And this can cover the entire stockpile. Then if we also run the stockpile under the doors, it should stop the doors ever being clogged up. The problem with it, I think, is that we're going to get so many bodies mounted up. If you think of that Viking raid we had where it was 70 dogs and 50 people or with weapons and shields, everything dropping on the floor, we might need quite a few pullers to pull this off. No pun intended. We've got our fancy armor. We've got our very fancy kill box. We've got our fancy shields. Now all we need is a very fancy Captain Cuba. Crack open a cold one with the boys, and we'll see if this works. And if it doesn't, I'm... I'm sorry. This should hopefully reconstruct him back to how he was before the first time he died. That doesn't look much better, I'll be honest with you. It does say fresh. It does say fresh, but it, it, it really does not look it. And then... We resurrect. Now, bear in mind with this, there'll be a few days recovery time. But at least this... Well, I mean, there was before anyway. But at least this way, it also won't take home out with it. He's back. Hey! Put that down, Cobalt. Captain Cuba, welcome back, my friend. On to the next one. My good friend, Arco Joris. Oh, my God. Look at how far you've fallen. Oh, no! It doesn't work. Use Arco Joris. No! Oh, Arco Joris. Can we just resurrect him? Fuck it. Just cut out the... We can't resurrect him. He's... He's done for. And last but not least, and maybe the most important of all, Ohm's oldest friend, Struppers. What? That's not working either? Why? What? Ah! Oh, it's because she was reserved by somebody else. I wonder if we can bring back Joris then. One Struppers. Oh. Ohm? She... Seems to not have a head. Oh, because we tried resurrecting a psychic and it's taken her back to where she died. So yes, she's fresh, but she's also 56% missing. There's hope. Little Joris. Hey, there we go. Oh my god, this is such a great day. The legends return. Joris is back. And finally. Struppers. Holy crap, she's gonna be confused. And out of the plasma fusion reactor, the crazy armor, the weapons, the buildings. I think the hardest thing to explain is why home can suddenly talk. Shotgun diplomacy and snow dog are beginning their marriage ceremony. Oh, happy day. Oh. Snow dog, are you... Are you good? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Took him a minute. Snow dog, bon sabat, and shotgun diplomacy, pepper stasius. Not that it really matters at this point, I'll be completely honest with you. How's Fendeldort doing these days? I did install a joy wire in her. Does it only minus 20 overall? As long as we keep her happy, she should be fine. I mean, look, the, the plus seven from the rec room, the plus six from the bedroom. And as long as she keeps eating the fancy meals, we're actually able to do it. We're actually able to keep someone with Zer's corruption in the colony and happy more to the point. I mean, look. Things are going to be confusing enough for Struppers as it is that I think she'll be overloaded. We might as well double down on it and also get the implants out of the way too. Ohm, you can talk. Oh, Ohm. I, I can fly. Oh my god, look, it still remembers her club. Whoa. Talk about insults or injury. Holy shit. That completely wiped out our steel supply. Holy crap. And speaking of wiping out supplies... I gotta get rid of some of this gold. Oh my god, I've gotta get rid of a lot of things. This is nuts. Burn it all. Burn it all. If we don't need it, burn it. All the copper that we had from tearing down all those buildings. All the... Oh, again? All the crazy shit we took about the quarries but never actually had a use for. All it's doing is sitting around building up colony wealth and... I mean, we really don't need that. Holy shit, we can actually see all the items we've got. Look at this. And then in here is only the stuff that we actually want to keep. This will be the stuff for the 
for the babies and Captain Cuba and Stroopers when they get up. I feel like today's been really good for organizing shit. We've organized the family tree. We've sorted the dynasties out. The buildings have been redone. That's that's quite nice. I won't lie. It was a wake-up call yesterday, you know? It was a complete fucking mess. Nord's people from the Red Wolf clan. Oh, poor Nord's people. Poor, sweet Nord's people. With your beta poly helmets. Yeah, all right. Oh, we didn't quite finish building the uh, kill box pullers. Damn it. Oh, no. Dawn is frail and she can't move anymore. Ah, oh, burn scar on the brain because of the APB-1 rifle. And now because she's frail because it's her birthday, she's she's done for. We're going to have to find a way to cure her. Okay, that's that's doable. We can, we can do that at some stage. Oh, shit. Here they come. I was hoping we'd at least get one of these online, but that's okay. Something we could test tomorrow. I don't suppose they've delivered the resources, have they? Well, they fucking have. We're just waiting for a builder. Ohm. Ah. Uh, that landmine blew up into a... Is that supposed to happen? They're supposed to leave behind, leave behind the, the shells that blow up to kill them in the first place? That doesn't seem right. Oh, shit. They're all built. Well, that was a bloody fast turnaround. And then we have to overclock every single one of them so they work faster. And then on the filter, we allow all. If I've set that up right, they should immediately start grabbing the crap that's on the floor over there when I unpause. Oh. Fucking no. Um. Oh, they are. They are. Look, little placing component. Okay, then we say here and we go digital storage unit. And then this one we'll call... Killbox crap. Then watch. Yes. Well, kind of. What the fuck are you doing, Stroopers, you moron? I know you're new here, but good God. Stroopers? She said to fucking search and destroy. She should remember that from where she'd been resurrected. Why is it not pulling the weapons, though? Placing components, sure. Ah, oh, I know, I know, I know. Right, we need to allow all items in here. Now, go. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Perfect. A um, little bit late because, I mean, the enemies are here, but that's all right. Yeah, let's stop them, though. Uh, you go here. You go here. Give me a second. Oh, you can't wear beta polygonian armor. Come on, actually can't get through. Well, that's bullshit. Um, I don't think there's a way we could stop this guy. Beta polygonian armor. 586 percent. 830? That's genuinely the most powerful armor we've seen in the game so far, by the way. Uh, I mean, just keep punching. Can we send someone to go, like, go and, go and help? Yeah. Flank them? Maybe between the two of them, they can take them out. Shotgun diplomacy, just punch them. Oh my god, that guy's in complete beta poly armor. These Vikings are way too strong. Yeah, get him. Get him, squad. This is ridiculous. It's like... We're not doing anything to them. One group is flaying. Thank God. Yeah, get out. They're unkillable. Taste my element X32. What a catchphrase. Oh my God. What the hell is... They're like pinging all over the place. This is so strange. I think we're going to have to go down there because the last two are using range weapons. I'm sure Ohm can handle it. I love the very polite Viking Q to come and steal our things. That's very nice. Really hoping they retreat before we have to fight that guy with the Bates poly armor. You guys want to leave anytime soon? Or just punch him through the wall? That also works. Oh! Brigadier Lebowski and Corrupt are babies. Yeah, my bad. I was wondering for a second then why they weren't fighting off the bloodthirsty Vikings. It kind of dawned on me. Hey, and look at that. No killbots clean up either. Ah, uh, Gummond. Gummond age 36. Animal hater pessimist nudist slob. And then we've got Odin's son. Shooting a melee. Polyamorous schizoid stoner. I think I don't think we're gonna take on any stinky Vikings. Thank you. Poor Cobalt once again getting the short end of the stick there. Find the one character we couldn't possibly ever kill. Well, at least not until we're up to the very end game research. What the fuck the fucking stinky Vikings can turn up with better gear than us? I mean, sure, we could craft it, but the amount of beta poly you need to make one set of Guardian armor would be insane. But besides the Immortal Viking. Incredible new armor. We've saved two dynasties. Our colony wealth is now... Holy crap, look at that. Our colony wealth is now... Uh, better. We're still over two million, but but better. And we've brought back... Legends. Stroopress herself is back. Eating a... Gourmet meal in a... Blood-strewn... B box. 
It's probably just the resurrection psychosis. Don't worry about it. And who could forget the red-headed child? Thank you all for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Today's been a very weird one, I will admit. It's uh, it's quite nice to have caught up with all the family trees and get everything kind of back in line and everything fixed. But uh, it's just, uh, it's just so weird. It's just always so strange. Thank you to the patrons who allow this very strange experience to exist in the first place. Big thank goes out to Sionymus, Mimic with Munchies, Lord Condog, Elias, KQ the Magic Flying Velociraptor, Gordy Number One, Bellman, Major Mythical, Cyric Three One Three, Kate, Officer Pappy, Kish. Average Nobody, Essidus, Michael Mullen, and Q for their support of the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Thank you guys for making the channel doable, manageable. Well, let's not say manageable. Thank you to Evan Dragon 323 Omegador, Mountain Cadalbe, Heck, Infectious, Matthew, Tezerex, Inc., Roman Candle, Airy098, Janosch, Calron24, Tesnaf, and Revan. So full credit for the following masterpiece goes to... Stupid number four over on Discord is going to be very sad they didn't change their name before I talked about this. Welcome, my friends, to 28 episodes of Ohm. Let me talk you through what we've got going on here because things are a little complicated. The five various colors here correlate to different branches of the family trees, or I guess family tree at this stage. The orangey beige color representing House Gravy Plasma. The hot pink branches representing the Sabat Dynasty. Blue. House Stasius. And finally, pour one out for Big Arcadius himself. The purple is House Dimos. The grey colours are various characters that are married into these dynasties. The fact that there are only seven of them should be a concern. It is a concern. And on the topic of concern, stupid number four has very helpfully given us a legend in the bottom left hand corner. Degrees of inbreeding within the family tree. As we go over the family trees, the number in the top right-hand corner of each of the character boxes shows the percentage of them being inbred. And let me warn you in advance, the further we go down this tree, the more rapidly that number increases. We'll kick things off with House Gravy Plasma. Notice the line as we go through all of these characters, the line that connects them all. The solid line represents the next leader of the house, the next patriarch of the house, and dotted lines represent other descendants of the family. So the house begins all the way in those early years with the original Plasma herself, a female founder of this dynasty, her direct descendant, Toilet Gravy, which is how the house ended up becoming House Gravy Plasma. Toilet Gravy had two descendants, Little Gravy Plasma and Bumfrey Hoggart. Little Gravy Plasma inherited the house and in turn also had two descendants, Dranmere and Barnabas. Barnabas, the youngest child, had a daughter, Worcester Sauce, and with that, that branch of that particular family tree was extinguished. Going back to the main branch, Dranmere had two children, Surviving and Fatigable. Surviving went on to marry Taku Cat and only had a single child, Captain Cuba, the undying the unresurrectable. And unless we can find a way to bring Captain Cuba back soon, that could potentially be the end of the Gravy Plasma dynasty. Captain Cuba, incidentally, one of our most incestuous characters out of all of them. 14.6% on the inbreeding score. House Plasma ended up being the smallest of all of the four great houses with only 10 members and potentially now only ever 10 members. Next, we'll move on to the Sabat dynasty. Joint second place for... House size. Beginning with a union between the original Sabat himself and Kippos. They in turn had two children, bare minimum, and the hobo. The hobo married into the illustrious house Dimos, leading bare minimum to inherit and become the new patriarch. And bare minimum really did put in the work for his dynasty, getting married twice. First time to Jester from the great Dimos dynasty and having Billy Bunce as his first and direct successor. His second marriage was to Fatigable, having another four children. Taco Cat, Keg Denter, Gustavalicious, and Bone Crusher Jones. Out of the three sons of Bare Minimum, Billy Bonce and Bone Crusher Jones ended up having children. Gustavalicious kidnapped. Billy Bonce became successor to the dynasty and in turn had a son, Bonce, who married his aunt, K Keg Denter. Which is a little bit strange. Maybe not that strange when you realize that their child, Toy Boy Roy, only has 8.6% on the inbreeding skull, putting him actually significantly below Captain Cuba. 
What did you people do? And in conclusion, that leaves Toy Boy Roy and Hezron as the two most final members of the Sabat dynasty, giving House Sabat a score of 12. Then, joint with Sabat. With another score of 12, we have House Stasius. Founded many years ago by the original Stasius, who eventually married Collateral Kaluvich and had two children, Big Pepper and Sugar. Big Pepper, as the successor, in turn married Cassandra and had a son, Beckle Peckle. Beckle Peckle succeeded Big Pepper and in turn had another three children, Cobalt, Dawn, and Bap Snug. Cobalt became the eventual successor and married two times, Taco Cat and Cuddles, having a total of five children, Shotgun Diplomacy, Penny, Vladimir, Avion, and Susamu, leaving Vladimir as the expected successor to House Stasius. And then finally... The big man himself, Arcadius, the Obsidian Saint, founder of House Dimos. Now, to my knowledge, the family tree doesn't track dead ends. Branches that ended up not going anywhere at all. Arcadius had two marriages. First to Alias Grey, leading to Moira. And the second to Siala, leading to Kepos and Hanky Pank, his eventual successor. Hanky Pank, doing Arcadius proud, also had two marriages. The first to Narfulf, leading to his successor, Herky Jerky, and the second marriage of Hanky Pank to Kekvit Ure, leading to Cassandra. Herky Jerky, in turn, married Bumfrey Hogger and had three children, Jester, Pank, and Octavius, his successor. Octavius married the Hobo and had two sons, Dick Clapper and the Chicken, both of whom went missing in action, but fortunately, the Chicken, who inherited the title after Dick Clapper went missing, had by that point married Bap Snug and had Arcadius the second as he was kidnapped arcadius the second was born saving the dynasty almost wiping out the line of arcadius arcadius the second in a show of phenomenally big dick energy ended up marrying his own great 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 grandmother siala the person who married original arcadius and they had a daughter uwu and then tragically our oldest colonist siala was killed leaving house arcadius House Dimos potentially without a successor, without a male heir. And with a total of 13 members, House Dimos is just about edging the lead. Probably a poor choice of words, all things considered. But with both House Dimos not having a male heir and House Plasma having their male heir currently a, a zombie, there is potentially two of the great houses going extinct. Houses that we've had since the since the tribal era and again a huge thank you to uh, the people keeping track of this the family tree creators in the video discussion channel on discord thank you to uh, stupid number four gajimaru and ariza manu without which how would i be able to feel so conveniently ashamed of all of these colonists